be brief the first set of the light Shoes on, get up in the morning, cup of milk, let's rock and roll Getting cold, get the drum, rolling on like a rolling stone Say so when I'm walking home, jump up to the top of the road Ding dong, call me on my phone, I stay and I get my ping pong ha, This is getting heavy, can you hear the bass boom, I'm ready Life is sweet as honey, yeah, this bitch ain't like money Disco overload, I'm into that, I'm good to go I'm diamond, you know I glow up Hey, let's go Cause I, I, I'm in the stars tonight So watch me bring the first and the light Okay, first things first, if you haven't checked out my video about my first day as a software engineer, you can check it out over here, I believe, or over here. So let's talk about my first week. So basically, as my first week as a software engineer, I was, my, my first day, I was like really excited to be a software engineer. But the first week, you really get to start doing more tasks and you really get to start meeting more people that are being put onto your team and everything. And I think one of the things that comes with working from home and working with other people is that because I was living alone before, I was a little bit lonely. And so that's why like a few of my friends and I got together and we sort of worked together, which has been so much more fun. Um, but it's always nice to code with people around you because I think that having the ability to just work from your own place and having the times being very flexible is very nice but sometimes it's very hard to get in contact with people who wrote the specific piece of code that you're trying to like work into or basically people who can help you with specific code because a lot of people they don't reply as fast as if you just meet them in person and you're basically gonna have to wait a while before someone replies back to you and then if you look at my desk setup um, another thing that I noticed is that like I I originally had two external monitors with my first day as a Facebook when I was working alone but because we're traveling I really can't take those external monitors with me I might actually have to buy one later on but I actually did get a portable monitor and it's this monitor right here and then I have the two MacBooks here and one is my work MacBook and then over here we have um, essentially like a portal um, and basically it allows me to call other people and it's really nice because sometimes I do work with other people who work at my company and I just like FaceTime them while working so it's like so nice to just have someone there work with you because like sometimes you know you just might get lazy or you might get stuck and you just don't know what to do and it's good to have someone there you can talk to about your problems for that. Basically today I'm gonna work on doing a few tasks for other people and just to get a vibe of like what the whole company process is like. So a lot of times when you join a company, you think that, oh, you need to know everything that the company has and all the technology that the company uses. But the cool problem is you actually don't need to. For a lot of these companies, they basically teach you how to do the technologies on site. So you're basically given a mentor and he teaches you how to do a lot of these technologies. So you don't have to worry about um, being prepared to learn a lot of these things because they're able to teach them to you. Basically for me, like there's a lot of things that I. I don't know how to do so I'm like pretty overwhelmed already with a lot of these like different technologies that are going on so it's been pretty wild but there's been like super nice people they've been willing to accommodate for me and today I'm gonna to work on a few tasks to try to get a gauge of you know how to do different areas of the whole company and just maybe do some Android tasks and maybe do some web tasks after that you have to realize that a lot of these companies have a ton of meetings so I'm gonna to go to a lot of these orientation meetings for the first week they still have a lot of these where I get to meet people and talk to different managers and Enters, and so I'm super excited for that but a lot of times these things can do distract you from coding so I would suggest not to plan too many meetings in one day or to plan all your meetings in one day of the week so you can get all those meetings done and the rest of the days you can just code So I kept looking outside and actually the weather outside is so much better. I'm just so tired of working in my small space out here. I'm thinking about like, just like moving everything to outside. To be honest, it looks really nice outside. So I might just move everything outside to work. Like take advantage of the, the sunlight while it lasts. We're work from home so we can go anywhere. Moving to my own drum, leave before the sun comes. I was gonna make this count. Bleeding for the sake of this place though hoping this would all work out but i've been stealing time thinking if i try everything will turn out right we're caught up in the climb love was far behind someone's gotta stop this madness when all
Okay, so I'm working on this task right now, but I have to download some prior information in order to work on the task. And it's saying it's going to take about 20 minutes or so. So I'm just going to take a quick jump into the pool while I wait for that to work out. You see, the really amazing thing about being a software engineer, apart from like a few other jobs, is that being a software engineer, you can essentially code and have the flexibility to code whenever you want. And essentially, you just have to attend a few meetings um, during the day. And essentially, if you have good Wi-Fi, you can code and have the flexibility to code outside of the scheduled work hours because you're a software engineer and you're working on your own specific projects. But yeah, basically, this is my first week as a software engineer. And all I can say is, Working with other people from home has been so much nicer than working by myself as my first day as a software engineer because you get to have people around you to basically talk to and I definitely need that from time to time because staying home after a while it gets really lonely sometimes. Oh yeah, make sure to subscribe to keep updated with my travels as a recent software engineer. I'll be updating you as I grow as a software engineer, helping you with stuff that I learned along the journey to become a software engineer and also offering a ton of advice and a ton of tutorials in order to help you prep for a software engineering interviews and also showing you my life as a software engineer. Alright, so I finished my task, so I'm thinking about moving everything back because it's getting a bit windy and I want to be able to talk to you guys, so I don't want the sound to get a little bit messed up. Bam, back home. Let's get to work. Okay, so there's a few things that I wanted to talk about regarding my first week as a software engineer, and one of them is the imposter syndrome. So if you don't know what the imposter syndrome is, it's basically when you first work at a company and you first work at a new company, essentially you feel that you're not good enough as the other people are. And a lot of times when you do go to a tech company or you go to one of these companies, there's going to be bound to be hundreds of people who are better coders, better programmers than you. And you definitely, a lot of people felt like this. Like I've talked to a lot of my friends in these tech companies and they felt like this too. And I have certainly felt like that um, during my first week because there's just so many things that I don't know how to do that like everyone knows how to do and I'm just scared that I'm gonna be behind. And I've been talking to a few of my managers about this and I'm talking to other people about this, but everyone says that it's like totally fine to feel this way because like over time you get to learn technologies that you can teach other people. But honestly, like, the 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 gap between me and so many of these other people at these companies are I just feel like it's so big that like I feel like I'll never be able to catch up and that's making me feel a bit like imposter syndrome like I have to work harder you know to ramp up and to like do more in order to basically like catch up to their level another thing that a lot of people wanted to ask about was like essentially like when I code like not working in a company I would just use like VS Code and I would just make my own project. So how does coding or how does the coding style work at a lot of these larger companies? I think every company has their own IDE that they want their people to use and they have their own culture regarding like how to push code and how to review code. But one thing that I learned from a lot of these companies is that it takes a lot longer to push out code and to review code. And essentially like you would have to learn whatever IDE the company is using and then you would have to like get used to that over time. So essentially like a lot of these times like when you feel like oh I have experience using this ID or using this type of editor or using terminal like a lot of these things are like different at these specific companies then you would have to change your mindset to work at these companies and I think that's a problem for me because like the work style is a little bit different like I'm used to github I'm used to merging a lot of these things are a tiny bit different so I'm not really exactly sure like I need to work on this like a little bit and then like it's just like a little bit stressful the first few weeks because there's just so much documentation that you have to read I also hate writing reading documentation like I don't know about you guys but like documentation to me is just like so much words and I just cannot like focus on all these words um, and I kind of understand them I usually just like just like can't focus focus but there's a, basically they give you a ton of like um, documentation to read and they also give you a ton of courses now I like these courses because like a lot of these companies give out specific courses to their technologies and I really like them because they allow me to like learn more about it it's almost like a semi like boot camp like tutorial it's like almost like a coding like whole coding tutorial just geared towards you learning the technologies for this specific company and basically that's just like 
I really like it because now I get to learn so many more technologies that I have never learned before. A lot of these companies do have team selection and I'm currently in a process where I'm meeting a bunch of new teams and seeing like if I like those teams or not. And one of the things that I basically look forward to or like look towards the most is whether a team helps their new engineers to grow, whether they have good mentors and whether a team can have good work-life balance because like Honestly, like I love coding and I don't want to come in here and then be like, oh, like I love coding, but then like I get burnt out. So I don't like coding. So I don't want to have that happen already because I just recently started. So then I just like don't want to have to deal with that. Like, like some, you know, some teams having bad work life balance or maybe just like not getting along with the manager or not getting along with people. But I know that a lot of these tech companies do have like really good like work life balance. I have heard some companies have like bad horror stories and I just definitely don't want to feel burnout, especially with work from home going on. So right now, my friends are thinking about going on a small trail hike, so we're gonna do that. Shining through the city with a little fucking soul. Light it up, 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 light it up,